Hello, everyone, and welcome to day three of GTC, the Google Technology Certification. We are going to take a look at what I think is one of the most overlooked, but yet the most powerful uh, tool in the G Suite arsenal, and that is Forms. Um, if we look at what our scenario for today is, and remember, these scenarios are based upon what is actually on the test. So if you can go through these and feel confident about what you're doing, you're going to do fine on the test. So today we're going to be creating a form that we're going to call Spring Break. We're going to put in three questions. We are going to give um, our famous principal, Principal Brannon, who is GCE level one ADM at gmail.com. I still haven't figured out what all that means. Um, we're going to make him a collaborator, which is cool. And then when we get the form finished, we're going to send it to the wife of the gentleman who wrote the book that we're using all this from, with permission, I might add. Um, and we're sending that to her, which is, you know, kind of cool. Uh, let's see. And then we're going to take a look at how Google Forms are connected to spreadsheets, which is the really cool part about the Google Form. Now, when you jump down here, what I've tried to do and have been doing in these uh, uh, daily uh, scenarios is I try to put in questions that are straight off the test so that you can see what you're going to be up against. Uh, I feel good about the questions today because it hasn't been that long since I had a group of students who took the test. And we kind of, they pointed out these were the kind of questions that were on there. So I've tried to put these in here so that you can know what you're going to be up against on the test. And I also tried to put in some questions um, that would, unfortunately, I can't put them in the way that the test has them uh, because it uses different formats. Um, this is the one that I wanted you to see more than any, and we'll go over it at the end. But they use uh, the ability for you to order things. In other words, you match up. Um, you create a grade book to track student scores, and you can put in there what it is, form sheets, whatever. Um, same thing over here. This would be where you would basically move the labels up and down. What you see here are the correct answers. That's what I'm trying to say, I guess. Um, and so on. I've also, at the end, I've put in a link to a set of Google Forms flashcards. Uh, this is from Quizlet. And uh, these, again, are based upon the actual questions uh, and information you need to know to do well on the test. All right, as always, let's start with our Google Classrooms that we have created. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go to my Google Drive. Remember, the Google Drive is linked to your classroom. And I'm going to open my exam materials folder because what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be using a Google Form. Now, let me talk just a little bit about Google Forms. And as you can see, I've been playing around in here. Now, I already have one created, but that's okay. I'm going to show you what it looks like, how to do it. Google Forms is a way of creating a whole lot of different stuff. And one of the things I love about it that I think as teachers that we kind of miss the point. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that a lot of this data gathering has been taken away from you. Um, we have these little tests that we give kids, MPAs and LPAs. Those should be done through Google Classroom. Why? Because I can then see the important data that it gives me. And what I can see that's really important is trend data. Remember when we were looking at the spreadsheet, I made a little comment about, ooh, look at that trend data. That is what is the most important part of when we are examining our teaching. We need to be looking at how our kids doing. The second point. Formative assessment, formative assessment, formative assessment. The closer we have testing to the instruction, the better we can judge the results. So formative assessment being right there at the end of a lesson um, is how we can tell how the lesson's gone. Now, one of the things uh, when we used to do KTIP, 
one of the things that we used to say to teachers uh, in, in training was if you wanted to just use hands up, in other words, one means I got it, five means I'm really in trouble or the reverse, that's fine. Yeah, that's okay. But the problem is with formative assessment and creating the quiz, I can have the ability to have data in my hands. And the fact that um, Google Forms are linked to spreadsheets, oh my goodness, now I have all the data in the world and I have it in a format that I can actually use uh, to make decisions about is the instruction going well? Do I need to change something up? Um, the, the way they're going to use it today is a form, which is okay. Um, I can give you a sense of formative assessment with it, but you know, it's all the same thing it, in form and the way it works and looks, it's all the same thing. Uh, the last point that, that I would like to make is the beauty of it is, is that I can share this data to parents. I can share it to core, obviously to kids, cause that's what it'll do. But I also can put in collaborators. So if I want to share with Mrs. Smith down the hall and Mr. Jones um, how we're doing in my class, uh, then it's easy enough to do. In fact, it's one of the questions on the test is how to set up a collaborator. Last thought, Google Forms should be used, in my humble opinion, should be used every time we want to check the temperature of the room. Uh, how am I doing? How are we doing, class? And we can set that up very simply inside the um, Google Form. And then as you have seen, it's easy enough to put things out here. So for, I hope we're getting into the habit today. Um, I'm going to put in, today we are exploring Google Forms. I'm sending that out to all of my students. I might even have included a little video down here because remember when you click on add, you have the ability to go out and search. Um, and I, I'm doing this because I want you to get into the habit of doing it as well. We all need to get into the habit of when we have a class that we start every day with a little blurb that says this is what's happening in class today. So you even timestamp it. All right, let's get to that. Um, let's get to that scenario and let's get busy. So as you remember, uh, all we have to do is we go up here to new and look at this. This, this kind of surprises me. It's kind of sad. The Google Forms is not in the top tier here. I have to go all the way down here to more and then I can slide over and it's right there. And then I can Google Form. So I'm going to do that. Now let's look at what the scenario tells us to do. The first thing it's asking us to do is to name this form. And we're going to name it. Hold on. I think it's my spring break. Let me jump back. My spring break. So we're going to create a form. We're going to call it my spring break. So I'm going to come up here. My spring break break. And if I wanted to, I can click up there. It will then show up. And of course, as you well know, it is now sitting in my classroom Google Drive. Everything you create ends up in the Google Drive. Now, whether you want it to or not, that's where it's going to go. It's going to go into the Google Drive. And that's why it's so important. Every once in a while, you go into your Google Drive and you clean up, you sort of do a little housekeeping, um, create folders, put stuff in it. And, you know, um, one of the things that uh, people point out to me all the time is that there is no such thing as drag and drop in the Google verse, in the Google classroom, in the Google suite. And boy, that is a pain because, you know, we're so used to just moving objects around on the screen, uh, files in the folders, et cetera. Uh, the only thing it has, <laughs> we're close to that, is the ability to drop pictures in. Like, you know, when we were doing, looking at changing the theme, you can drop a picture in. 
that's as close as it gets to having drag and drop. And that's a real shame. I think it's really important that we need to have that ability. So we've created a new uh, form. We're going to call it Spring Break, and we're going to create our first question. So you come down here, and it, where it says Untitled Question, it wants us to say, where did you go for Spring Break? Kind of cool. Okay. Simple as that. Now, what is this question? First of all, it's a question. What kind of question is it? That's right over here. So the answer was, or what we're looking for would be a short answer. Bam. Okay. And so as you can see, it has created that, that simply. Nothing to it. Uh, things to look at over here, you can delete it. You can duplicate it. You can come over here and you can do a description. You can do a response validation. What does that mean? That means when someone takes your little quiz, the response validation will come back and it'll say, this really was Steve. Steve was the one who sat down here and took your quiz. Very nice. You can also decide whether you want it to be required or not. If you do turn it on to be required, be aware that people cannot go past the question until they answer it. Kind of important, actually. Now, to create another question, simple as come up here, plus sign, add question. Here we go. What's the next question it wants us to do? What did you enjoy most about spring break? Okay. What did you enjoy? Okay. Now, change the format. This time we're doing a multiple choice. So I can come down here under option one, and this is where I start putting in my answers. Go down, do another one. Being able to sleep in. <laughs> well, at least they have a sense of humor over the Google. And having some time with my family. Uh, I think we've had this conversation, but I'll just remind you uh, that one of the things that you will be able to do, because we can do it in all computers, is you can basically highlight this kind of stuff, do a copy, and then drop it into your form. So you don't, if you're a slow typist, you can get it done pretty quickly. Then we have one more that says, describe a favorite moment that you had on spring break. Plus sign. And that's a paragraph. Uh, don't don't expect the when you're doing this, don't expect it to jump up and uh, automatically know what kind of uh, answer you're looking for. Uh, so pay attention to that. Don't let it um, you know don't let it put something in here that is not what it's required. So if we can look back, we have one question that's a short answer question. We have one question that is a multiple choice question. And we have a long answer paragraph, whatever you want to call it. Simple to put together. Now, the next task that it asks us to do is we're going to add our principal as a collaborator. 
easy peasy. You come up here to the three dots. Um, you know, nerds call these snowmen. Um, actually, the, the real name is More Choices. <laughs> Add collaborators. And boom. You can do a link to share. Or you can invite people in. So we're inviting in our old friend, Mr. Bannon, Principal Bannon, who is located at GCE Level 1 ADM at gmail.com. Now, what does this mean? First of all, it means he can see everything you're doing. And you can see I'm going to notify him. So this is how I can do that. Now, if you'll notice over here, he is given the rights to edit. And that's fine because we want him to be able to, you know, if you're doing something and you want your principal to see what you're up to, um, that's fine. But here's the point. Editors will be able to view and delete form responses. Well, they're not going to delete them, but they sure do need to see them. And they need to see the names and all that that are attached to it. Anyone who has a link can view my form. And that link is right there. Now that I've made him a collaborator, I'm going to send it. And as you can see, he's now on my list. If I do um, want to change up, I can. But I, can, I cannot change up the edit. He's always going to be able to edit. Done. Easy, wasn't it? All I have to do is go up here, three dots, come down, add collaborators. That simple. We'll come back to this in a sec because I do want to take a look at the preferences with you. The next thing it says, after we've added him, use the form settings to ensure the form records the students' email addresses and they can see each other's responses. So I come up here to my little Geary and I'm going to collect email and I'm going to get response receipts. This one's an important one. Respondents can add, can edit after submit. That's a good one. And you can see I like summary charts and text responses as well. That's a good one to have. Oh, by the way, Let's do a quick tour across the top. Now we've got it made. Let's do a quick tour. Here's your preview. That's what it looks like. So if you need to see, um, you know, and the person who's taking it, they can, because you turned it on, they can request a copy of their responses. It's kind of nice. Okay. Um, this is the sort of look you might want to have. You know, if you're kind of into how cool things might look, you can do that here. It's not required on the test. Uh, and then here's our little add-ons. Add-ons are just like what we were talking about yesterday in the Google Docs. You can basically go in here and go look in the extensions and add-ons feature uh, that are that's a Chrome feature. I want to make sure you understand that. The, if you this won't work if you're trying to do this on Safari or another browser. So you can do, you can find add-ons, just type in search, type in forms, and oh my goodness, there's a ton of add-ons here. Uh, some have to do with uh, how it looks, you know, if you want to make it fancy. Some of it has to do with how you can uh, take the form you've created and send it over to an Excel spreadsheet. And speaking of that, oh, well, let's see. We've got to we've got to send this now. We've gotten everybody in the game. Let's make sure we put in a collaborator under preferences. We are going to collect email addresses. We're going to make the questions required. We don't have to do that one. We can leave that one out for this because this is a survey. Not a quiz. I'm going to save that. All righty. Now, in the scenario, it basically says at this point, 
When completed, send the form to Mrs. Fiznet. Okay. And so I'm going to come up here and I'm going to send an email. And her address is, surprise, 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 GCE Level 1. Oh, look, it remembered. But sorry, it's his parent. All right. So now I have her in here, and we're going to send this to her. Uh, but I invited you to fill out the form. Uh, include the form in an email. There we go. And send. By the way, did you notice about the collaborators there in the send box? So see, it takes you right back where I just was, just to make sure. So. As I said, one of the beauties of the Google Classroom is how simple it is. One of the things that drives you nuts is how simple it is um, because it has these multiple ways of doing everything that you don't know about. You kind of learn it one way and it has it. But that's okay because now we know how to do it both ways. And if I were taking the test, you better believe I would come up here and do the sin, send it to the person it wants me to send it to, Include the form in the email and then come down here and click on add collaborator and do it from there. Now, so what happens is, here's your responses. Well, nobody's responded. Why don't we go ahead and do that so we can at least see what it can look like. So if I come up here and let's see if I do my little preview. Um, I'm going to put in my email. Uh, where did you go on spring break? Well, we all know where we went on spring break this year. And what did you enjoy the most about spring break? Having some time with my family. Describe your favorite moment you had on spring break. Hey, the warm weather. Oh, right, Steve. And then we are going to submit. I don't need a copy. That's a choice, by the way, kids can make. All right. So I have now, let's see if it shows up. Ta -da! There it is. So there's my first response. Um, let me jump a little bit around here, if you will. Put up with me for a second and let me see if I can pull up a form that has a lot more stuff in it. And then I can give you a sense of what it can look like, especially for what the next part of the scenario is asking us to do. So over here in my drive, um, I have a I have several forms in here that have to do well, I have a form in here that I'm going to ask you to do that will be your way of, of giving us an idea of uh, how that you did or you how you felt this did uh, get you ready for the test and all that. And I'm sorry I'm hunting around for it. We'll just search for it. And I have nothing there. Well, I'll tell you what, if I find it, I'll bring it in tomorrow and we can look at it. But let's go back to our wonderful little one response that we have here. The next thing that it's asking us to do is to take a look at our responses through the use of a spreadsheet. 
Simple as that. How do you do that? Here's our form. Here's our responses. This is where the connection is. You can download responses as a CSV file, comma separated values. You can get email notifications for new responses. In other words, if you set this up and someone hasn't responded yet, you can um, tell it to after the fact they can still respond. But here's the one it wants you to know about, spreadsheet. So it says, create a new spreadsheet, my spring break. Sure, create. So now what it's doing is it has now taken me to a spreadsheet and it's basically asking me or showing me what were the responses to that. Simple. This is the power of the form. This is easy to create. And then creating a quiz, as you can see, is just as simple. Um, and then the answers show up over here. Simple. Um, spreadsheets and sheets we're going to go over. So I'm not going to sit here too long because spreadsheets can be a very intimidating uh, topic for folks. I love spreadsheets. It just makes sense to me. So the scenario basically is asking us, hey, go into the spreadsheet, create a filter, and sort the email addresses um, of your respondents by alphabetical order. I think it's, does it tell us? Doesn't tell us, but we'll do it by ABC. So the other way around. Now here's where you have to be careful. Because when you go in and you click on data, this is where your sorting and filtering capabilities live. You look at it and go, oh, there it is. I can sort the sheet by column A, A through Z. That sort the entire spreadsheet. That's not what it's asking you to do. Not what it's asking you to do. It wants you to sort by email address. So you select the column that's called the email address, go back to data, create a filter. And then when it does, it drops this little filter icon into your column. You click on that and you sort A through Z. That's all there is to it. Wasn't that easy? So the the power of it is, is that I can create a, a data sort that's focused on one area. Whereas if I did the whole the whole spreadsheet, everything in the spreadsheet is going to go A, B, C. It's just, you know, the way I can focus down on one area. You can imagine then if you wanted to do it for if you had a quiz, you could go into the column that was for question number one with all the kids' names going down the left-hand side. And then you could order that into um, a numerical order that you basically set up, which is right here, filter by values. And that way then you can see that how many people got the question right, how many people got the question wrong, who got it right, who got it wrong. It's called disaggregation. That way you can start getting a sense of, wow, look at this. We had 10 out of the 15 kids I have in this class miss this question. I think we better go back and take a look at that. Forms, spreadsheets, match made in heaven. Now, we're supposed to send this out. We made a filter. We sorted by student email addresses. Share the responses spreadsheet with Principal Brannon again. Good old Principal Brannon. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to hit share. You know how to do this now. And we're going to put in good old GCE level one. It didn't take me too long to be able to memorize this at gmail.com. Look at this. Look at this. 
Do you want uh, Principal Brandon to be messing around with your email, um, with your spreadsheet, or you just want to show it to him? Now, I, I say that tongue in cheek, but really seriously, if I were to allow him or her to edit it, what I would be doing this, then is they can basically do what I just did. In other words, they can flip the thing, they can do the sorting and all of that. So if they're looking for what they want to see data-wise, they can. Um, the scenario doesn't tell you anything like that. It just basically says, give him access to it, share the responses with principal, so on and so on. Okay. So by default, that is can edit, but I'm just sharing that with you, uh, that you uh, can make him uh, different ways, different permissions. Okay, so I'm going to send that. There we go. We just finished doing scenario number three and forms. Let's go back and play around a little bit in forms just so I can give you a sense of what's all possible. One of the cool things about it, and this is a question, it's on the test, that's why I'm doing it for you. One of the questions on the test has to do with, can you put a video into a Google form? You sure can. Let me show you how. So you go over here, let's see, what would our question be like? Um, what was, the biggest spring, I don't know what I'm saying here, the biggest spring break location. How about that? All right. And if I wanted to, I right here, I can add a picture to it. You notice here, I can also add an Earl. So if I'm trying just to give directions and trying to give information out to kids. Let's go see if we can find that. Well, looky, looky, looky here. <laughs> How about that? So according to usnews.com, these are the best spring break destinations. Don't know what that means, but there we are. Oh, here we are. What are the most popular spring break destinations? And here we go. Cancun, Las Vegas, really? Jamaica, who's got that kind of money? Can we just, you know. <laughs> All right. So if I use this, what can I do with it? Can I put it into the question? And let's see here. I've got a link now. So I can take that link, copy it. I can come back over here to an URL. Oh, it's wanting an image. Okay, fine. Well, I can do that too. Let me show you. You know how, you know what I'm doing. So I can put in just about anything I want in here. Okay, and then it'll show up under questions, multiple choice, and I can go in here and I can put in the information that I get from that URL, and that would be the answer. Now, what if I wanted to show in one of my questions, and I'm, I'm being totally goofy here, so please put up with me. And I can put in different um ideas let's see spring break in cancun there's my video so now what i can do is i can do a search boy this is a stretch isn't it Select it, there I have it. Now, in all seriousness, 
what can I do with this? What you can do with this is you can, um, well, first of all, you can change it all around. You can have embedded in your questions resources for kids to help them understand what it is that your test is asking about. And you can do this in as many different ways as you can. So in other words, I can come back and add another question. I can do the same thing. I can add another video in here. So you have the ability built in to um, give kids information. I'm showing you this because it is a question on the test about can you put a video into a question in a form. Forms, the least used and probably the most interesting part of the Google Suite. Remember what you're doing here. You are using it to do um, formative assessments. You could do it for summative as well. Don't get me wrong. The power of it is, and we know that now, is the fact that it is tied to, you see all the responses. The responses are then tied to a spreadsheet that you can then see your data. You can manipulate the data. Um, you can do various functions, which are not on the test, which is a shame because this is the part that I get all crazy about, is being able to um, go in and, and do different functions. And here they are under insert. And it's amazing what you can do. The easy ones, of course, are some. You add up something. Average, you get an average of it. Count, how many times did this occur? Max and min, so you can tell where was the, the one end of the spectrum and where was the other end of the spectrum. And then you have just a plethora, a plethora of functions that you can do with spreadsheets. And the beauty of it is, in my humble opinion, the beauty of this is over, say, a um, Excel spreadsheet is that it's simpler. That doesn't mean it isn't as powerful it's just simpler. Here's the biggest difference between the Google Suite form product and what you would have in Microsoft Office, which the closest you can get to this in Office would be uh, a spreadsheet. But you really can't create a quiz in a spreadsheet. It's just where the data can go. The closest you can get to this in Office is Access. And if you don't have a headache um, after you've done an Access database, you're in good shape. Let me explain. Google Forms is what we call a flat database. In other words, it's just sitting here. The information I get from it, the information I create, that's all I'm going to get. It doesn't compare itself to any other uh, databases. It just gives me information. Access is what we call a relational database. And what relational databases are is they have the ability to link out to other databases or other spreadsheets and then bring the results, bring the information back into one location. We call it a key file. And that then allows you to have very large databases where all the information gets filtered back into just one location that you can see. The world runs on access, but the world should be running in the classroom on the Google Forms because it's just so much easier. And when I say easier, I don't mean that in a simplistic way. I just mean that it is a easy way to develop good data. Let's go back and look at some of those questions I just mentioned. Let's see, what do we got? Here we go. Google Forms links collected data to which tool? You know that now, this is a Google Sheet. Which of the following question types are available? Multiple choice, graph, choose from a list, sum, average time, choose from a list, scale, grid, date, check boxes, pie chart. Well, you know, if you didn't know that answer already, guess what you can do? You can go right over here. You can put in a question. You can come down and look at this. Now, let's see, what have they got? They've got a grid, multiple choice, uh, check boxes, yeah. You get it? Okay. So the answer would be list scale 
and grid. Which Google tour can, tool can help a teacher collect information from parents, including their email addresses to improve home and school communication? Hello, Google Form. You would think Gmail would work there, but here's the key, information. Uh, and you saw how we were checking that box to include the email. Which of the following is a way to incorporate a video of a chemical reaction into a quiz for a science class? Add the video to the question content when creating a form. Simple as that. There's no such thing as a forms API. Well, there is, but that's not how you do it. Ms. Dent wants to use Google Forms and Google Sheets to collect and track different aspects of her students' work. Use drag and drop to show how she could use these Google tools efficiently. I put this one in because I wanted you to see an example of what they do on the test. Uh, because on the test, they have a lot of these drag and drop, uh, move things around on the screen, which isn't cool. I don't know how effective it is as a test taking tool. But when I when we do it, what I'm showing you here is the correct answers. OK, so all of this would have been, you know, mixed up and then you have to move them to the, the correct um, answer. Create a grade book to track student scores. Well, duh, sheet. Check class understanding of a topic, forms. Uh, protect collected data from change, forms. Uh, collect anonymous feedback, remember you can do that very easily, it's a check, forms. Analyze trends on a record of uh, books of read by students, sheets. Mrs. Blake had students respond to a survey using forms. She wants to see the data by specific users. She can edit the summary responses to exclude certain users. That's true. So all you do is you just go in and where it has the responses, you just go in and click off. You can say, I don't want to see this one. I want to see that one. I want to see this one. It's easy. Mr. Huffman uses Google Science to introduce a new class project. He wants to embed and link to Google Docs, forms, and drawings in order to make his slides more interactive. Use drag and drop to match the Google app with a way that it can be used within slides to encourage student participation. Rate the content that has been presented. You can put a Google form into a Google slide. How do you do that? You know how to do that by now. You use the link. Remember that link? Remember the link? Right there. So if you shorten it, put it into any of these documents we're going to be looking at, you can then have the ability to jump into your form. Additional reference material, Google Docs, sure. Suggestion notepad, Google Forms. Uh, gauge understanding, Google Forms. That would be a Google formative assessment. And graphically designed ideas would be the Google Drawings. If you're using forms to collect school assignments, you can set an end date or time after which the students can no longer submit responses using the forms feature called end time. That's true. The teacher wants to rearrange the questions on a quiz she's preparing in Google Forms, but is unable to do so. What might be the issue? I put this one in because the Google Forum is blowing up with people commenting, complaining that when they are trying to use the Google Forms in this time of where we're staying home and instructions be delivered virtually, the forms are not working correctly. And there's lots of people saying that kids cannot open up the forms, so on and so on. Google is claiming that it's a problem with the amount of people who are slamming, you know, their Google, which I find that's not a that's not a good answer because you guys own the world when it comes to well maybe Amazon owns the world when it comes to server size, uh, Google's right up there. So, um, but the real answer is, and this would be the answer in normal times. She has to remove all the users she has shared the form with. Whoops, yeah. That's the only bad thing about it is if you want to go back and do it again, now how would you how would you do that? You know, and you, you want to keep have, but you want to be able to go back and uh, change it up. So basically all you have to do is make a copy. So you can keep what you have here. In other words, the data you've collected off of this form, just make a copy. And then the new form, you can go in and, you know, change up all the things and get rid of the, 
the people t that are a part of it and then go and change up the order of the questions and so on. Or the other thing you could have done was you could have had the questions come up in random order. Mr. Bentley finds it easy to use Google Docs sheets and slides in his classrooms that are very similar to the programs he's used in the past. He overhears his colleague. These are the kind of questions that are all over the test, by the way, the multiple choice part. He overhears his colleagues, Ms. Barnard, talk about using Google Forms as well, but isn't sure how it's relevant in a school environment. Which of the following are relevant uses for Google Forms and education? Don't you love it? Uh, performing basic calc, by the way, this is a, a checkbox thing. In other words, check all the apply. Performing basic calculations with numerical data. Uh, yeah. uh, creating an interactive presentation. Uh, yes. Surveys for collecting data for group projects. Absolutely. Create formative quiz checks at the end of each lesson. <laughs> of course. Gathering feedback on field trips. How'd you like that field trip? Do that. Uh, the other thing that I stop right there for a second. Well, let me keep going. The only one that doesn't fit here is designing a logo for a school football team. You can't do that in forms. Duh. Um, the one thing that I think that if you are lucky enough to end up in a school where you have a one-to-one -one situation and folks, that's coming like a train right now, especially after all of this that we've gone through. Uh, I can see school district, well, Right now, in the uh, a lot of the archdiocese schools, it is a one-to-one. -one. Um, and some of the public schools are one-to-one. -one. My point of this all is, part of using the technology in your classroom is setting up a routine. So the routine could look something like, I walk in the door as a student, I either have my Chromebook under my arm, or I go get it out of the uh, box where it's kept, I sit down, I open it up, it automatically connects to the web and I can go right into my classroom and right sitting there would be that announcement. And remember how I keep doing those announcements and that would be our setup for today. At the end of the day, as a student, I would then be directed by my teacher to go in and fill out the exit slip, which is a Google form, simple as that. Now you've got a way to assure that kids are knowing what's happening in the class and then they choose not to. You also have a way of getting feedback. So you can tell that uh, if someone just doesn't have a clue about what's going on in class or uh, the kids are getting it. Finally, here's this little Google Forms flashcard from Quizlet. Um, again, I like these because they are very connected to the test. And there's some really interesting ones in here. Let me show you this. Look at this. You can have 4,000 cells, 256 columns in a spreadsheet. Eh, you're going to be able to handle that. What is, a key firm, what is a key term for a person who creates a form? A form creator. How about that? How many different types of questions? That is a question on the test. Isn't that funny? How many different types of questions are available for form? A form can be sent to a user via which, oops, I forgot to ask that, answer it. Nine types of questions. Woo. The form can be sent to a user via which three ways? Link, email, and bed. What appears in the top row of spreadsheet when response data? Questions from the form. What do you call a questionnaire distributed to a group of people with the intent of collecting data related to a specific topic? A survey. <laughs> can forms be imported from other programs? Ooh. No. Now, having said that, there is a tool out there that will let you take uh, a raw Word document that is in the form of a form or quiz, and you can convert it over to a Google uh, form. But that's not a part of the Googleverse. It's an outside thing. What determines the overall design of the form? That's a good one. Theme. Okay. <laughs> Which tab and command are used to sort data in your response destination? Ooh, that's a good one. Let's go back and look at that one. Data, sort, range. Okay, remember, remember what we talked about. Response, change, response, destination. Which tab and command are used to sort the data in your response destination? Response, change, response, destination. Which tab and command are used to sort the data in your response spreadsheet? 
And that was the sort. Remember that one? That's our sort. That's our data sort range. But remember, if you want to sort the information specific to a column, then you have to go data, filter. It then drops a little icon there in your column heading. You click on that, and then you can see um, what are your choices. If you And if you wanted to, you go all the way down to values, and you can put in your own. What areas can you customize in your form theme? Well, header image, title, description, question, help, text, objects, woo, form background, page background. That's kind of neat. How do you turn off receiving responses for your form? Go to response, accepting responses, uncheck it. Which command allows you to test run your survey before sharing it with someone? View live form, the eyeball up at the top. Which tab and command are used to freeze rows and freeze uh, freeze rows and freeze columns? Through fears. Simple. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? How simple it is. Which question types allow you to add a page break and go to a page based on an answer? Multiple choice and choose from a list. So what you can do with that is in your multiple choice question. This is not. Uh, you don't have to do this on the test, um, but this question might be on the test. You have to basically uh, realize that in a multiple choice, you can have a, a link that could take you somewhere where you can say to the kid, you got the wrong answer, and then explain why it's the wrong answer and have them go back and do it again. That's why you can set up your test so it can you can do resubmissions. Remember how we did that? Information gathered from a form can be stored in what two locations? spreadsheet and the form itself. There you go. That is for today. This was scenario three where we kind of did a survey of the use of Google Forms and its connection to uh, Google Spreadsheet, otherwise known as Sheets. I hope this is being helpful to you. I'm trying to keep it as tight to what the scenarios are because that's where that's what's going to be on the test uh the only time that i kind of wander off is when i really like something like forms i really do like forms tomorrow we'll be looking at tomorrow will be very short because there's not a whole lot to do tomorrow um and this is kind of stuff that uh to me is right up there kind of esoteric where it's basically um, taking a look at YouTube playlists, et cetera, and then it kind of jumps down in here to slideshow. I might, what we might use tomorrow for would be a little more extensive look at slideshow. Uh, slideshow is one of those things that, again, like forms, we don't use forms enough as teachers to gather information, and we don't use slideshows enough for kids. Last thing I want you doing is out there creating slideshows to bore the heck out of the, your kids with, but using slideshows for kids to demonstrate their understanding of what we're doing in class is a fabulous way, fabulous way of tapping into all those different ways that kids can look at their learning. So we'll take a little bit of time tomorrow with looking at um, slides as well as doing the um, YouTube thing, which is simple. You won't have any trouble. All righty. As always, if you have comments, questions, concerns, you can reach out to me at 502-457-2937. That is my text uh, message number. I have had people ask me things. Oh, you know what? I did get a question. Well, I'm sorry, you all. You're all sitting out there right now. Oh, come on. Shut up. But let me show you this one real fast because this um, did come in yesterday. And it's one of those that I really do need to address. So we were in this yesterday. We were doing our little uh, Google Foo and you. And one of the things that we were talking about in this was uh, commenting. I wanted to show that the other way that you can have people work within a document is suggestions. Now, when you turn on suggestions, what happens is this allows people to give you as the owner, the owner suggestions about it without it messing up anything here in your document. If you're working with a student, suggestions is an excellent way of communicating. 
Well, what's the difference between a suggestion and a comment, Steve? Well, if you'll notice, um, if I come down here and if I highlight, okay, you can see that I have the ability to do that, but I also have the ability to leave suggestions that kids can then see um, that is, you know, suggestions, if you think about it, could be the whole thing. So there, sorry, I did not do that uh, yesterday when we were talking about comments and suggestions. Uh, another great tool, another great tool. Alrighty, as always, 502-457-2937. If you need help, just give me a yell.